Jennifer. It's Andrea Gribble. Welcome back to another amazing episode. You guys, this episode seriously is amazing of the Mastering Social Media for Schools podcast. Quick shout out to the social squad. We just got done with our very first five day fire up your Facebook page challenge. You guys, we had over 500 schools across the country participate. I just got to give a special shout out to all of those in the social squad that took big amounts of trust and you put in the work and the results were off the charts. Amazing. I mean, I will come back and do a future podcast just on what we got to see from that challenge. But I got to just say, Thank you. Thank you for participating. Lots of prizes, big money given away. Um, it was just so much fun. We even gave away a free membership to our membership community. So um, just had to give that shout out. You guys, today we're talking to Joelle Doy. I'm so excited. She's from Mineral Point uh, School District in uh, South West Wisconsin, um, and she's amazing. She is a full-time communications person for a district of 750 people. Um, she's going to talk about her role as she progressed from part-time to then full-time to totally rocking all of the communications efforts. She's going to talk about, you know, what she's found best to work in communicating with their school, how it's impacted their enrollment, which obviously like impacts uh, the uh, budget of the school, which is amazing. Um, she'll talk about the journey of, of kind of establishing a school hashtag and getting people behind that and share one of her best tips, um, which is, um, well, she'll tell you what her best tip is. And I think it's amazing. By the way, Joelle is one of the most like introverted people. Um, so I will sh sing her praises every day, all day, because she is amazing. Um, but uh, she just gives a great interview, and I'm so excited for you to listen in. Now, before we get started, I just got to give another special shout out to Myra Barrera. She is the Director of Communications and Foundation in Beeville Independent Schools in Texas. She left me a recent review. Have you left me a review? Have you subscribed to this podcast? Well, her review says, I can't say enough good things about Andrea in this podcast. I started from the beginning and have been listening nonstop. Andrea is the ultimate cheerleader and her guests expert advice has helped me so much. I am brand new to school communications six months in, but I have found newfound confidence knowing someone like Andrea is here to help. She is so knowledgeable and offers so many resources for newbies like me. If you know anyone who is new to this field, the best thing you can do for them, the best thing you can do for them is to show them this podcast. Even if they're not new, I guarantee they will still learn something new. I'm so grateful for this podcast. As long as Andrea keeps releasing episodes, I'll keep listening. And Myra, you for sure are going to be a future guest on this show. I'm guessing you might not listen to this show for a while because like, I think you're still in episode the teen somewhere because you're like listening in order, which is totally fine. I should probably give you a heads up that you're mentioned in this episode today. But thanks for that uh, that amazing uh, review. And again, welcome. Your review might be, you know, read on a future podcast and you might end up landing yourself as an interview uh, on this podcast. So let's get started. Joelle's got lots of things to share with us today. All right. Today's K-12 PR tip comes actually out of that recent five-day challenge Um Everybody had a lot of big things that they learned, but one of the key takeaways was on Facebook and the ability to actually compare your school's page to other schools around you or to amazing schools like Mineral Point School District. Like I compare my school to that uh, page as well because, hey, I'm always looking for ways to up my game. So you guys, if you go onto your Facebook page for your school and go to Insights, scroll down on the main overview uh, page and you're gonna see a Pages to Watch section. You can actually add other Facebook pages, again, from schools around you, schools of your size, or maybe schools that you aspire to be like. Again, 
you know, plug in Mineral Point School District. Just start typing in New Auburn School District. That's the school district that I manage. And you'll be able to instantly see how many page likes that each page has, uh, how many posts they've done in the last seven days, and then that engagement level. You're trying to drive up that engagement level because the more engagement you have, the more ultimate reach you're going to have. More people are going to know about your story. So it's a great comparison tool. Um, and then guess what? If you see that, like right now, I'm looking at it and I see Mineral Point School District, you can actually click on the name of the school and it's going to bring up the most popular posts for that school that maybe drove so much of that engagement. And right now I'm seeing uh, a district coaches of the year um, and they had Corey and Grant Miller. And so anyways, they have some teachers that were recognized or, or coaches and they have 286 likes or loves, 62 comments, five shares. Um, it'll just help tell you, hey, what's working well for them? Could we do something like that at our school? Of course, you might not have a coach of the year, but maybe there's something else that you could use on your page. So insights, go scroll down to the bottom of that first page that pops up and grab some pages to watch. And uh, I guarantee that it's going to help elevate your game, take it to the next level. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's chat with Joelle Doy. Welcome to the show, Joelle Doy. Hi, glad to be here. She is repping, those of you that aren't watching the YouTube show, she's repping the Mineral Point background. I mean, you got it all together. Good to see you, friend. Good to see you, too. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen each other in real life for so, so long. It's it's sad, but hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I'm really missing the in-person conferences, for sure. I know. And you've, you've been really active this last year. Well... So I was just saying before we started, you know, most of you who have followed my, any kind of my teachings or anything should probably know Joelle and Mineral Point because basically you show up in every single presentation I give. Did you know that? Um, I did about five minutes ago when you told me for the first time. <laughs> I mentioned your name. Um, school PR day was just with Final Sight. And I think I had like three of your examples. You and Kristen Boyd Edwards, I think, are the most frequently featured uh, people. So well, I'm in great company if that's the case. You are. She's amazing. Um, but for those of uh, the listeners who maybe don't know who you are, could you just kind of share your background and how you got in to school PR? So um, I guess my professional career, I was trained to be an educator. So I have a degree in social studies, secondary ed from UW Platteville. And I graduated in 2006 and I thought I had my path all lined up. I was gonna go teach. I wanted to get back to my hometown. I just, that's what I wanted. And I thought that's what was gonna happen and it didn't. Uh, so life kind of throws you some curveballs. Um, so I had done some part-time sports reporting for the local newspaper when I was in college. And then they also owned some other small town newspapers, one of which was in Mineral Point. And the editor left and my bosses said to me, uh, would you be interested in being the editor of the Mineral Point newspaper? And I had zero journalism background. Um, my mother was an English teacher though, so I felt kind of prepared for a little bit of that writing style. But I said, sure, I'll give it a go. I thought I'd be there like one or two years until I got the teaching thing figured out. And I was there eight. And my last year at the paper, the school district of Mineral Point actually decided that they wanted to invest in a school communicator. And it was a part-time gig. And I thought, this is a perfect blend of my training as an educator and my newly honed journalism skills. So I applied and for one school year or pretty much the full year, not quite, I was both the local newspaper editor and the school communicator for the district. Um, that was just a workload that was not sustainable. So I remember speaking to both of my bosses and I'm like, something's going to have to give here. I can't continue in this, in this dual role for forever and keep my sanity. So, um, I was very glad that the school district decided to fund a full-time communications position within about seven months of my hiring as a part-time communicator. So that's my story. 
That is incredible. So first of all, everybody listening was like, I wish I was both the editor of the newspaper and the communications <laughs> person, because you could have some, <laughs> some say maybe in how they're spinning some of the stories for the school. A little bit, I guess. That was always something that I really tried to, you know, be aware of because I had built, I thought I'd built a lot of trust in the community in my eight years. And I didn't want that to go down the tubes. I didn't want people to think like, oh, she's in the back pocket of the superintendent now and just doing whatever the school board says or whatever. So I hoped people were, well, were still able to, you know, know that I was honest and transparent and all of those things. But yes. yeah, I'm sure I still get called the paper lady, honestly, <laughs> like a couple, even though I've been seven years as the school PR person, there are still some people in town that call me the paper lady yet. So that is so funny. And you know, I've known you for a long time, pretty much since I got started in 2014. I knew you had a, a teaching degree, but I didn't realize you didn't have a journalism degree. No. So you no. you just learned as you went. And I mean, if you see this gal's work and you will, because we'll link all of their social media channels and the website. And then obviously your photography skills are amazing. So you didn't go to school for any of that. I didn't. I, I remember when I first started at the newspaper, they handed me a Canon you know, camera and they're like, here, figure this out. We need photos from this, this, and this. And it really became a passion of mine that turned into like music photography and things along those lines that I don't have time for anymore, but that's a different story. Um, so I, I love that challenge of photography, always trying to get a good shot. And that translated so well into school PR as well. So yeah, definitely. Any tricks to like learning that? Because I feel like that's a big skill. It's been on my like list of things to do for like five years and I have a nice camera but I don't really know how to use it right and I've got girls that are in sports and I want to be able to take nice pictures but for anybody that's out there that is kind of in the same boat it's like okay here's the camera just a couple t tips that you'd have uh well a uh, trial and error I think it's the big one um I think I love the rule of thirds that's an easy thing to start with sure. if you want to make your pictures pretty and frame them all nice. So look that up. There's probably tons of YouTube videos too that you could watch. Uh, and just the lighting with your ISO and your F stop and making sure you get all that in line. Um, it's That's the key, but trial and error is the way to go for sure. And good equipment helps, but it only does so much if you don't know how to use it. You know, you could have a $1,500 camera and still take bad pictures, so. Yeah, and the nice thing is, is over those years, these things have come a long way, the cell phone yeah. and uh, with portrait mode and some of those. Now that's not gonna be, I mean, you gotta see Joelle's uh, action photos and sports, I mean, those. Well, that's the thing, but honestly, I don't use my good camera for anything really much except um you know sports photos or low light situations otherwise i just use my cell phone and my cell phone's old and it's still decent okay so, so what you, what phone do you have i have like a galaxy s5 like i am so stone age it's pathetic but i'm one of those people that uses something until it dies yeah so that's just my mentality okay. well that and but that's good for people to know because sometimes they don't have the latest equipment but it's you don't really need to have that um necessarily because they've come so so far in the editing software too yes you know explore that as well because that can change a, a bad photo and do a decent photo pretty quick yeah yeah awesome so you gave us some good tips and and like you said and we're totally in the same well you're younger than me but um you know you youtube stuff right you don't know how to do something mm -hmm. you just youtube it um so mineral point is a district of how many students we, 750 roughly. Okay. So you guys, this is an amazing story um, because 750 with a full-time communications person is not typical, right? What's your nickname across the country? Do they call you small town or something like, or they'll just say yeah, like, maybe. they'll just say like 750 or something. You'll be just like, which is. I think I went to my first national seminar and i think at that time we were 703 okay. or something so that's yeah that's what it was yeah <laughs> you get to know be known by a number um but you've been able to do amazing things so you are a how big is your department just you then just me okay and what is what are some of your roles then your different roles because we're going to talk a lot about social media today but that's not your right. only responsibility so can you just kind of describe that I kind of say that I do, I have three buckets of my work. I have like information dissemination. So that's obviously social media, 
newsletters, you know, press releases, working with media, things like that. I also have community engagement. So I'm a Kiwanis member. I'm on the education, our Excellence in Education Endowment Board. I used to be on the Chamber of Commerce Board. So a lot of those, uh, you know, getting out into the community, kind of building relationship things. Uh, when we did our strategic planning, I spearheaded that, those kinds of efforts. And then I have the public relations council part, which is all the behind the scenes stuff that people generally don't see. You know, I'm, I serve, uh, attend the administrative team meetings, um, council, my superintendent is needed. Uh, but that's probably, I mean, I know social media is really important, but I think those closed door conversations are really what makes makes us successful. Yeah. And you really, um, with your first superintendent, had such a great relationship and really got a seat at the table. Can you just kind of talk through, because there's going to be a lot of people listening that, you know, are interest or help with social media, but they're interested in helping their school get to the point of maybe halftime communications, halftime, whatever else they're doing, which are a lot of things, and then eventually getting into a full-time communications role. Can you just talk about that journey um, and what you think got you to the point of convincing them that, hey, we should go from halftime to full-time because I could accomplish you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. So gosh, that was so long ago. It's so hard to think back, but you know, this position, even the halftime part was really rooted in our strategic plan. And I was not part of developing that one. Uh, that was before my time, but communication, I think showed up in that document like 10 times. And my former superintendent, Luke Francois, who's now at uh, Waterford union high school, he, he basically told the board, you know, if you want to put your money where your mouth is here and you really want results, I can't do this alone. And, you know, uh, bless his heart, he really tried. Like he came in in 2011 and did a lot of things. You know, he started a print newsletter. He started, a, a, I think, a superintendent column for the paper. I mean, he really did a lot, but he's a superintendent. He's got nine million other things going on. And this sometimes, you know, falls to the, the back burner and there isn't just a consistent presence. So, Luckily, he got the board on board with that, you know, halftime position. And then we really started to, you know, show our analytics, right, and show our open enrollment increase. Those kinds of statistics that are hard to argue with, uh, that really helped build the case for a full-time position. And I think the change was so drastic in such a short amount of time. I don't want to say it was an easy sell because I don't think it was a unanimous vote for the school board. It was close, but I'd have to go back and check. Um, but still, in that short amount of time, uh, that and with no comparables, like you said, I mean, I couldn't look next door and say, hey, you know, this school district has this position. We need it too. We really were a leader, and I take a lot of pride in that and also a lot of responsibility. So I would say just gathering that information and even um, – not the hard data, but just the emails that you get from parents, you know, screenshot those or save those and say, you know, I didn't know the ones that I didn't know about this before your position or, you know, thanks so much for being so responsive. I mean, those kinds of little things really go a long way too. Yeah. And it's, it's such a customer service, like um, society we live in now, we're always expecting urgent answers. There's good ways and bad ways with our K-12 PR well, you know, um, method. And I know you, you uh, probably struggle with that too, because you're, you love what you do. So it's like you want to keep and serve these people, but there's some balance as well. Yeah. Um, that's great. I think that story just is really going to be able to help people. And the fact that there are metrics that you can definitely associate with. Do you have any idea of your open enrollment numbers of what they changed, you know, in that first? It was, it was pretty significant. We were losing more students than we were gaining. And now, now, it's completely flipped and I could, you know, look that up, okay. but, um, and we do exit surveys or, you know, when people leave the district or when they come in and the number two reason that people were coming to Mineral Point the last time we surveyed was better communication than the district they were leaving. And the number one was better teachers. I don't know what that means, but I'll take that. I'll, I'll be behind the teachers any day. Yeah. That's fine. And you're in, in with social media and other communication, you get to celebrate your teachers. So, I mean, that, that is a big part of communication. Um, that's amazing. And I just want to reiterate, you know, there's, there's an investment when you add a communications role, but 
Joel is justifying that investment because they went from a negative where they were actually sending more money out. Because remember, we're pu your public school, you get money for the kids that come to your school. And a lot of schools, I'm going to say it's around $7,000. So all of a sudden, if you start switching that number, it doesn't take that much to be like, you are way money ahead by putting investment you know, an investment in this position. Um, and, and and like you said, I think it's just somebody telling the story, right? Like the teachers didn't make a drastic change to what they were doing with their curriculum or anything like that. It's just now we had somebody telling those stories and that's what made a big difference for people. Yeah, absolutely. So what social media channels are you responsible for? Well, Facebook is our big one. Okay. Um, that is, I think we're at 3,500 likes okay. right now. And our population is 2,400 in the city of Mineral Point. So I think that's decent. I'll take that any day. Yes. Um, Twitter, we have, we have like a stagnant account, district account, but we don't use it. I might, I don't know if I say this out loud, I'm going to be held accountable, but I might get that going again but really we use the hashtag pointer nation and i know we'll talk about this a little bit later but i like that then everybody can have a voice in telling our story so the principal the elementary principal tells the story you know and different people and it's not just me i think that gives it some more authenticity and i might i instagram's really the one so our student i got to give a shout out to our pointer media student group as well um you can follow them blue crew on Twitter and Instagram. And they do a great job from a high school level of telling, especially our athletic stories, but um, they're knocking it out of the park there, which I feel very blessed to, to have that. And that is actually a class. They pr produce video announcements and everything like that, um, that teachers teach and all that. So they're doing a great job as story ambassadors too. Okay, so that's awesome. So you are, it's a great point, like divide and conquer. You don't have to, even yeah. though you're a one person shop, you're now relying on a class that is producing amazing content that is student told, right? Which is so powerful yeah. that it's the student stories in the student voice. So they're on Instagram and Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. You basically have a district Facebook account. And then on Twitter, you don't have a, a Mineral Point Twitter page, but everybody is telling the story through their own personal Twitter uh, profiles. And they use hashtag Pointer Nation to mm -hmm. collectively tell those stories. Is that right? That's correct. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure that our community is really living on Twitter. Yeah. I just, I've kind of just found that out. I use it a lot for professional growth, but I'm not sure how much uh, bang for my buck I'm getting with the time I'm telling stories on Twitter. So Yeah. And that's great advice for everybody listening because, uh, Joel, I've been doing Twitter uh, consistently. I don't tweet every day because, again, we don't have as many followers. But in New Auburn, we started in April of 2014. I think we have 127 followers. <laughs> Facebook? we have almost 2100 in our school community we have 549 people in the whole town so that is amazing reach spend the time where it makes sense you don't have to be on all of them and i kind of love that you're not even on instagram I, I think if you can have a thriving community with that at blue crew which we'll make sure to link to in the show notes um with that you call them the pointers new news crew is that right the Pointer Media. Pointer yeah. Media. Okay. Yeah. And they do all their own graphics. I mean, they, they really are good. They find the talent, right? They get the kids that are going to do the interviews. They get the kids that are going to do the graphics. And it's pointermedia.org if you want to check out their website. Okay, too. cool. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to link it in the show notes as well. All right. This is awesome. <laughs> I get so nerded out at this and you're always <laughs> teaching me. So I love it. Um, hashtags. So the power of a hashtag can can really unite a, di a district. So I know that you've really went above and beyond to really promote that hashtag. If everybody's watching, she's sitting in front of a Pointer Nation, hashtag Pointer Nation uh, backdrop, which is great. But um, what other things, what ways have you used to promote that hashtag? Well, a little bit about our story. So I think when I started, the district was using hashtag MP schools, and it just didn't really convey any emotion. And not only that, it was pulling in content some, sometimes from the Milwaukee public school system. 
and we're just, you know, we're very different, right? We're rural Southwest Wisconsin. So we wanted to have our own story. Uh, wrestling is huge in Mineral Point, uh, very storied tradition there. And they had started uh, selling some apparel that says Pointer Nation and people were wearing it to wrestling meets. And I thought, I don't need to reinvent the wheel with this. I can just take something that is already popular and supported by the community wrestling and slap a hashtag on it and make it universal for our community. So I did that. I think I started with like t-shirt giveaways at football games to the student section and, you know, prizes when kids were recognized at the school board level for, you know, a state accomplishment or something. And then people started saying, well, where can I buy those? And, you know, how can we get that? And it really took off. Um, I think I love the fact that we've got like 80 year olds in Mineral Point wearing hashtag Pointer Nation shirts that probably don't know what a hashtag is and think it's a pound sign on the phone to infants, you know, wearing it. So that's so amazing to me. You know, we've got car decals. I'm pretty much exhausted. So if anybody has any good swag ideas for anything, I would love to hear it. But I hope it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And I love the fact that the community uses it even if they don't have a school connection, mm -hmm. which I find very fascinating. And I think that's a blessing of a small town. It really, um, you know, especially with the last year, anything that we can do to unite each other in, in our efforts is appreciated. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I love it. Um, so some of my best tips come from you and you drive such engagement. Um, we've got some that are some of my favorites, but I, the best, I think, it's so simple, and it's coming up because mm -hmm. we're going to air this mm -hmm. on May 10th is, is uh, graduation. So tell me about the alumni roll call, how you thought of it, and, uh, you know, kind of how that works. Well, I don't know for sure if I was the originator, so I just want to be humble, and, but I think I might have been. <laughs> um, I think it goes back to my roots. Again, I, I'm passionate about history. I went to school for that. I love anything that, you know, uh, especially in Mineral Point we've had a public school system since like 1862. So we have a really strong tradition of supporting public education. Um, and my previous role at the newspaper, I used to always do a column every week called From the Files, where I would go back in the old editions and pull out interesting information. So I just have this really strong you know, passion for history. I remember we were looking at some way to kind of like capture our alumni base. Something else cool about Mineral Point is we have a handbook of every graduating class names all together and it just gets added to since 1879. So I could, it's pretty, you don't have, the problem is you don't have their married names on there. So you can't find these people now, but some of these alumni services, um, they're expensive, right? I'm sure we've explored those a lot of districts, you know, they'll help you gather an alumni database, but for a small school, it's just not, you know, economically feasible. So I'm like, how can we kind of start our own database? And I just thought, well, I'm going to put it out there and see who responds. And so then it's like, what do you do with that information? And I've tried to compile it a little bit. Um, not always easy, right? Because people change names. Not everybody's on Facebook. But it is kind of interesting to see. So all they do is shout out their class here and that's it. And it's great. I think we get like 200 comments every time we do it. So. Right. And, and, and you get good engagement, but you don't normally get 200 comments. No, just for this post. Yeah, just though. for this post. Yeah, yeah but the, but it works that well. And basically, it's just mm -hmm. like, hey, it's time to celebrate the, this new class of graduates. Shout mm -hmm. out the year that you graduated. What an easy question. <laughs> 1996 is the best year ever so did you graduate in 2002 yeah yeah so you had to figure out it was always easy yelling out the 90s to all the cheers i don't know <laughs> how you did the o twos or whatever yeah zero two i don't remember either but. <laughs> um but you guys this isn't this is a brilliant post um you're gonna do it on your on your page look and you can kind of rebrand it to your school but it, you don't even have to graduate from Mineral Point or, in my case, New Auburn. But, yeah, I'm usually getting 70, 80, 90 comments when I share that. Um, so that's an awesome one. I think last year or maybe it was before last year, you also started asking people to share their senior photos. 
Yeah, we did that. That's right. That was interesting. Yes. Um, so that was fun. We've done it. Yeah, you, that's a good one to do this time of year, especially with your staff. I think it's kind of easy to get them to buy in. We've done that with like prom too, where we've done, you know, staff prom throwbacks. Uh, one year we had our homecoming theme was uh, Pointer Hairband Nation. So a takeoff of the Sirius XM. And that was not me. Everybody thinks because I'm the big hairband fanatic that I came up with that homecoming theme, but that wasn't me. But we had people send in, our staff send in their photos from the 80s. And then people had to guess, you know, who they were. Uh, I think our staff appreciation week post last year was similar to that, where staff sent in a young school photo of themselves. And then I revealed later in the week who everybody was. Those just always drive engagement because it's fun to see. Sometimes people are way off on their guesses of who they think people are. That's awesome. Um, but I think you that nostalgia and like that throwback is so, I mean, even kids like relate to that because they're like, oh my gosh, my mom's hair was so high, right? In the mm -hmm. 80s. Um, so there's really good tips to that. And you know, you might be thinking, well, it's not really celebrating our school today, but remember the engagement you drive on your post helps all of your posts be seen by more people. And hopefully gets you some new followers yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, another really idea that I love, um, you know, Throwback Thursdays is a great thing, but you started doing something called Flashback Friday. And you asked a question. Tell me about how you thought of that. And I am going to have an upcoming blog on like f ideas for people to use because I think it's brilliant and you're getting good engagement on that as well. Yeah. Uh, during COVID last year, I think we were all struggling for content, right? You know, schools shut down and there's only so many Zoom screenshots you can post before they all start to look the same. Uh, so I thought, what is something that I could do once a week over time that's going to last for a while? And think about all the different positions in your school district, Spanish teacher, ag teacher, every kind of teacher, custodian, secretary, write all those down. And then I did a flashback Friday and asked people to post, you know, who I didn't say favorite. I don't believe I said just who were your Spanish teachers in school, even if you didn't go to Mineral Point, who were your custodians? And that kind of opened the floodgates for some good comments. And then they kind of take off from there. Somebody else says, oh yeah, I remember when, you know, this happened in so-and-so's class. And so that lasted me. I don't do it anymore right now because I feel like I tapped out of that, but that went on for a long time. And it was just every Friday that's what it was. And it was pretty, it was pretty neat. Yeah. And I'll, I'll link to one of those um, posts. Uh, remember you can search any page, a Facebook page, there's a little search bar up top. And so if you just type in flashback Friday on, on Joelle's Facebook page, you're going to see some examples, but you're exactly right. Like, yeah. Like who was my kindergarten teacher? Okay. I would answer it was Mrs. Nearing, but then it all, it brings up a story and then the, the comments turn into those stories, which really, you know, um, again, build engagement, maybe stories, uh, positive stories about your school. Um, so just really, really good idea and something that you guys could use now. Uh, we're heading into summer. Sometimes yeah. summer content is harder. Well, what if you did those on every Friday and ask those questions? You can schedule those out right in Facebook. You can schedule yep. those out for 10 weeks and you don't have to worry about that day. So um, I love it. Oh my gosh, um, I could talk to you for hours. Mm -hmm. um, what is your best, you know, a lot of people are one person shops or, you know, all of that, but what's your best social media tip um, when it comes to doing social media? Because you do it really well. And I wanna, I wanna emphasize you guys, uh, some of the best ideas that I get and we admire and acquire as Barb Hunter, she's the ENSPRA uh, um, new executive director. That's her term, admire and acquire. So you're gonna watch mineral points page and you're going to think what can I do at my school but but what's your best social media tip so my one of my favorite words in life is genuine um, and I think you really need to take the time to find the voice that's right for your community on social media and it's not the same for every school district I remember you know speaking at conferences when we started to have a lot of success and people would be like what's the secret and I'm like there isn't one. You're going to have to figure this out on your own, you know, because what works for me in Mineral Point isn't going to work necessarily for everybody else. 
So, you know, some schools have a lot of success with humor or memes or all that kind of stuff. Great. Awesome. Do it. If that works for you, super. I just don't do that. That's not really my feel for my community, but you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So if you're not genuine with what you're putting out there, people are going to be able to tell and they're not going to engage as well. It also helps build consistency. You know, people want to know uh, what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if something, they want to know where to find the information, they don't want to have to go looking for it. All of that kind of stuff helps build trust over time. So I really think just making sure you find your own voice uh, and build trust with your community. And that can that can be done with social media for sure. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. Um, and as you can see, like the most genuine person ever is Joelle Doy. Like you're, oh, you're nice. next to the dictionary, uh, you know, word um, <laughs> where it's just like your little picture with a hashtag Pointer Nation shirt on, which yeah. I have, by the way, because we roomed together uh, way back in the day. And she, of course, leaves me this nice little Pointer Nation um, t-shirt. Uh, but I don't have, right. I don't have it at this house. It's back in Minnesota. So I couldn't wear it. <laughs> today. Um, people are going to want to be your friend because you're cool and you know a lot of things. What's the best way to stay connected to you? So Twitter probably is my number one. It's my old Twitter handle from my music photography days and I just kept it. So it's at rock shot, all one word, underscore Joelle. And I also like LinkedIn. So if that's your thing, you know, you can find me there as well. And I'll put a plug in for my state school PR organization, which I'm the president elect of. So if you're in Wisconsin or even if you're in a neighboring state, I think we have a reciprocal membership thing. Don't quote me on that, but we'll get that started if we don't. Um, hit us up at Whispera too. Okay, so. awesome. You're so involved. And that's what I appreciate about you too. Um, really trying to give back um, and active. I mean, people know who you are across the country because of your amazing work, but you're making a difference here in Wisconsin. Wisconsin too. So yeah, at rockshot underscore Joelle. I never knew that it, that goes back to your photography days. Um, so that's cool. And who is the best like hair band ever? Bon Jovi. She's such a Bon Jovi fan, you guys. Just send her Bon Jovi like gifts in Twitter and she will definitely make sure to follow you because you know, I've only been to like 34 concerts. <laughs> Of bon Jovi. And you're only like 27 years old. So that's a lot of no, concerts. 37, oh, okay. Time flies when we're having fun. Um, yeah. Joelle, thank you so much for, for spending time with us. I, I'm sure this probably isn't going to be the last uh, time you're on this show because, I, again, you have such amazing work beyond social media, but definitely follow her. Um, thanks for, for joining us. I know you're really busy there in Mineral Point too, but uh, we wish you the best of luck and everybody listening. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you.